Okay, so I I used the wrong hotkey and stopped recording, and now I'm missing the last two problems again. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make up for that. Um, so I think that I didn't get to a part where I was explaining that uh, in this equation of the torque um, to, to lower the the load. That looks something like this. Um, I D M secant of alpha minus L over I D M F L secant of alpha. Um, if this value is negative or zero, it means that I don't require to add any torque to lower the load, right? And that's only going to happen if this value is zero or lower than zero. So basically what I need to test is if this, I find this and compare it to zero, okay? In this case, it would just be a 0 0.011, the DM that I calculated, is equal to 14.5 minus the pitch. And what I get, I think it's like a 0.18, which is positive. It means that I do need to add a torque to lower the load. Okay, um, if this was zero or negative, it means that I don't. I need zero torque or a negative, like remove the torque that is being caused by this load, so that it doesn't go down. Okay, um, that either happens because F is low enough, or the um, the force itself is um, the load itself. Uh, Actually, no, it's it's uh, literally because the, the friction load is, um, um, the friction coefficient is low enough so that uh, it's not enough for the screw to just be locked in place, right? And so I had already um, solved these and thought I had recorded it. Uh, fortunately, they're not super long. Uh, so problem seven, a pair of helical gears. Uh, Transmit 15 kilowatts of power. Pinion is rotating at 1,000 RPMs. There's a helix angle and a pressure angle in radians. And we have the diameters of the pinion and the gear. And we want the, all the all the forces. Okay. So as usual, we've done this a thousand times. If I get my power and I divide it by my angular velocity, I get my torque. In this case, this is 15,000 newton meters, which is joules per second. And in this case, I not only have to multiply the RPMs times two pi radians per second, uh, but also change minutes into seconds. Okay, so when I do that, I get 143.23 uh, newton meters of torque. And I know that the torque, or my tangential force, is equal to the torque over the radius. So 143.23 divided by the radius of the pinion. <coughs> which is 35 millimeters, okay? So 492 newtons. Now, uh, my helical gear looks like this from the front. It means that the force, the UT that I just calculated, is going in that direction, that there's a, another component of the force in the axial direction, because this force has to be perpendicular to the teeth. And then, it's not on the page on the monitor, but it's going into the monitor from outside. So if I were to draw that dashed line and the 3D vector, the angle that they form is phi. While this angle that it's formed between the normal to the teeth and the tangential is psi. Okay, so all I know from this is if I want the opposite and I have the adjacent of this triangle that forms an angle of psi, I can multiply the adjacent times tangent of psi to get the opposite side, which is WA. Okay, so this would be 492, 4092 times tangent of 0 0.5 and radians to get a 2235 newtons. And the radial one, WR, which would look like this here, we'll change the color, a vector coming out, uh, uh, coming into the gear, in the radial direction. I can get it if I have this dashed line. If I do 
dashed times tangent of P, I will get WR. How do I get the dashed line? You can look at this triangle here. It, that dashed line is the hypotenuse. So uh, the dashed line would be the root tangent over cosine, which is the, I'm going to use this adjacent of psi. Okay, so I put these two together and I get that WR is WT over cosine of psi times tangent of P. Okay, these are the values. One, two, cosine of 0 0.5 times tangent of 0.35 on my own radians, and I get the two, the 1702 newtons. Okay, and that's all I needed. All, all the three components of the, uh, the contact force between the Helco gears. Um, and eight, select the bearing for. <coughs> hold on. Okay. Let me look up the diagrams again. Select the bearing for a 40 millimeter diameter shaft that rotates at 400 RPMs. Uh, it has to withstand. Oh, so yeah, what I explained before is that this is how I got the problem, but this is probably miswritten. Do to a bevel gear mounted on the shaft, the uh, bearing will have to withstand. So bevel, there's going to be a thrust load. So it's a combination of a thrust load and a radial load. And so I have to select the gear and make sure that it's going to work. Okay. Um, and because of these values, we might have to combine those two types of loads, the radial load and the axial load, into an equivalent load. Okay. So you can literally do this by Googling different bearings, uh, seeing what the manufacturer rates them for, the life, and just making sure that it's a four, uh, uh, 40 millimeter diameter for the shaft. So the bore diameter, the inner ring diameter has to match with that uh, shaft. Uh, I'm going to use the one that is given in the book right after the combined load. So I look at this table um, and I see a 40 right here. Uh, for the bore diameter. It can be anything. It can be uh, looking at the DS. So the diameter DS would be this, which it would be like the shaft, right? And, uh, uh, the value for the shaft could be the DS. Uh, it can be anything. I'm just using this as an example. So if I do a 40 for the bore diameter, um, I would be looking at uh, deep groove, so ball bearing deep groove, um, values of 30.7 and 16.6 .6 for the C10 and the C9. So I'm going to write that down. So C10, I have uh, 30.7 kilonewtons, a C0 of 16.6 .6 kilonewtons. Um, I'm going to be using this eventually. So 4,000 RPMs means 24,000 revs per hour, right? times 60 in an hour, and then times 1,000 hours would give me 24 million uh, cycles total, right? Um, I'll be using that at the end. <clears throat> now, uh, to know if I need to take into account the thrust load, what I calculate is Fa over C0, which is like the st static load um, value in the catalog. So this is 3 over 16.6 .6 kilonewtons which is 0 0.18 something. So um, I looked that up in my table, this table. So I want to make sure that, sorry, not that one, um, that my value FA over CO is 0.18. I'm going to use just for the purpose of the example, uh, 0.17. So literally you would try to uh, interpolate between 0.17 and 0.28, so slightly higher than this. So some values that start in this um, column, sorry, uh, this row, and try to make them closer to 0.28 by interpolating. Okay. Uh, so for that, I have an E value between 0.34 and 0.38, which would be the next value in the table. So for this, it means that E is between 0.34 and 0.38. And it doesn't matter because I'm going to compare that to Fa over Fr, which is 3 over 5 kilonewtons, 0.6. Okay. 
I'm not doing the V here because if the shaft, if I'm using this for a shaft that is rotating, I'm assuming that the inner uh, ring inside the bearing is rotating, so V is equal to 1, so that's why I'm not going to take into account the V anymore. And I'm using this value just to make sure that it's higher than E, meaning that I do need to account for both uh, FA and F uh, radial uh, and get a, an equivalent force. So my equivalent force is going to be capital X. Um, V again equal to one times FR plus capital Y FA. Okay, so I go into my table and for that value again you would be wanting to interpolate between point seventeen and point twenty eight, uh, but the, these last two columns is where I get the capital X and capital Y point fifty six and one point thirty one. Yeah, I'm just gonna change it to one point thirty because it has to go down as the FA over C not value goes up. In my interpolation, I'm probably going to get a 0.30 or 0.29 instead of that 0.31. <coughs> so <coughs> my x is 0 0.56, radial is 5, y is 1.30, that's why I'm going to use it. I'm not interpolating, I'm just giving a, a, an estimate, and then fa is 3. What I do is my equivalent force is 6.7 kilonewtons. Now, I know that the rated force times the rated life to the 1 over A is equal to the design force slash the design 1 over A. And I'm using roller, uh, a roll bearing uh, from that table. It, it, what I selected was a roll bearing. It could be anything. It could have been whatever you wanted to select. And I'm going to use, I'm going to solve for FR, which is my C10. Okay, what I would look up in a catalog. And that has to be equal from this to the force of the design, which in this case is a combination, it's an equivalent force com combining both the radial and the axial load of my design. So I'm going to change this FD to an FE, which is what I just calculated, and then LD over LR, both to the 1 over A. Okay, so in this case I have a 6.7, which would be 24 million, which is what I did at the beginning. And this manufacturer specifically was 1 million cycles from that table that I just looked at it is 1 over 8 now that C10 that I get from this is 8.97 kilonewtons um, actually it isn't it's like 16 something I missed it okay uh, yeah approximately 16 16 or 19 I think it was 19 kilonewtons, you can do that in calculating if this equal to 3 uh, kilonewtons. So what I'm, I'm comparing this to the one that I chose. So I chose this out of nowhere. Like I got my manufacturer, I look at what they offer, I looked at something that has a shaft diameter, an inner uh, diameter, the inner uh, ring of uh, 40, because that was the restriction, and I use this to calculate my equivalent force and then compare the C nut or the rated load that I would need uh, for it to to work and not fail. And that value that I got was 19, which is lower than what the manufacturer is telling me for the, their C10. So it's fine. Uh, another thing that I could do here is calculate that equivalent value for the factor of safety. I would call the application factor, and that would just be the C10 over. This is the actual C10 over this value that I got from here. Okay, uh, so basically over everything else over this in the numerator, or you can look at it as another at it from another perspective, which is just the C10 is an application factor times this value. Okay, so literally the application factor would just be 30.7 over that 19 or whatever value we get here. Right, so. Again, no, this would just be something like 1.8 or something like that. Uh, and this is basically what uh, is telling me the safety factor for it. Um, right, so this should be enough uh, for the final. Again, uh, I'm choosing uh, problems that I didn't write, and most of them are this same difficulty level. So it should be pretty easy compared to everything that you guys did during the quizzes and during the, the exams. Uh, way way easier um, and as you can see we covered much much more in the class even like there's uh, 
you, uh, in this class, they usually don't cover all the topics that we covered and not in that depth. So you see that things are missing, like, uh, I don't know, the member stiffness of the screws, the part of the screws. We did that, and we actually did a bunch of problems, uh, both in the homework and the quizzes and even the, in the exam. Um, and the same for everything, like the reliability of the bearings or all those super complicated um, gear uh, systems. Um, but at least with this, you get an idea. So I'll make an announcement later. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, if you need an extra time with me tomorrow or Tuesday, uh, if you still have any questions, uh, I'll, I'll have some time available for you guys. But again, this should be enough.